जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री मन्नारायण जय श्री Shri Matchagat Guru Sudarshan Acharya Ji Maharaj, I pay my obeisances to Lord Sri Ramanuj, I pay my obeisances to Mother Lakshmi, and I pay my obeisances to Lord Sri Manar. I welcome all of you, physically present here at the Sri Narayan Dam in Durban, South Africa. I welcome those. that are watching this discourse live locally nationally and internationally and i welcome those that's going to be watching this discourse on youtube and in the various groups when it is subsequently posted from around the world so this is my introduction at every satsang i pay my obeisances to my spiritual master to lord shri ramanuj to mother lakshmi and lord shri manna and then i greet you here yeah, physically and i greet all those that are watching this discourse live locally nationally and internationally and i also welcome those that's watching this discourse when it is posted in the various groups from around the world so this discourse gets summarized within 2 hours this discourse gets summarized and transcribed within 2 hours after its completion after its completion and then it is posted in various groups from around the world that have an interest in sanatan dharma that have an interest in sanatan dharma another word for sanatan dharma is hinduism and since i have started this courses and since facebook has gone live all my satsangs are broadcast live and it reaches various parts of the world and to give you stats to give you stats an average reach of my discourses and its summary is 40000 people from around the world in a week Forty thousand people from around the world in a week, and this discourse is not hidden in this ashram. We have courage to broadcast it live. We have courage to broadcast it live. we also have courage to brought to deliberately post it in over 53 or 50 groups from around the world that have prominent people that have prominent people ranging from doctors lawyers pandits priests psychologists psychiatrists politicians who are in sanatan dharma who are in 
Sanatan Dharma. Our postings, and this I'm giving you stats that can be retrieved by anyone at any time. By anyone at any time. Our reactions to these posts, generally the reaction to any posting is 10%, is 10% of its reach. Our postings have reactions in excess of 30%. In excess of 30%. To date, to date, what is the date today? 31st. 31st October. October. October 2019. I have not received one negative complaint in terms of my discourses in these groups where prominent people, people with integrity, with intelligence, people who have studied the Vedas, gurus who knows the Vedas in and out, front and back, people sober, clean, neat, sattvic people who are authorities, who are authorities on Vedas have not refuted a single discourse of mine, have not complained, and yet I am discoursing in the most difficult philosophy in Sanatan Dharma. Yet I have not picked up any enemies. I am refuting, I am refuting philosophies that are followed by millions. Yet nobody has challenged these discourses even those that I have refuted. I'm given this background because my two sons, Mataji and myself, we were having a movie week. A movie week. Dana bought the nuts. <laughs> a big packet of nuts. And he said it's good for the memory. And I asked him, Dana, do I really need nuts for my memory? And he said, sorry, sir, you can use it as protein. And we were watching the Vishnu Puran. And after many years, Rishi, after many years, my two sons and myself, my two sons, Mataji and myself, we watched a spiritual movie, Vishnu Puran. And as usual, there's always questions, there's always questions. And my son, Sean, 
who was in darkness and on Diwali they came to light. That's what Diwali is for. I think I informed all of you. Person? My other son Vasan was also in darkness, he came to light. My son Yatin, who's going to be transcribing, he was also in darkness, he came to light. All right. So we we had some family time and because my son was in darkness for so long, he asked me a question. And he said, Dad. Would your filthy past, how can you be a guru? Would your filthy past, how can you be a guru? And I said, Sean, I will explain to you in satsang, let's enjoy the Vishnu. Quran, because the question you are asking me belongs to Hiranya Kasipu, the demon. Only a demon can ask me that question. Only a demon can ask me that question. And I said, Sean, you're basing that question. You saw Hiranya Kasipu? He said, yes. I said, you saw his activity in this world? He said, yes. And I said, what are the activities you saw? He said, Dad, he wanted to be greater than God. And I said, if anyone is greater than God, Sean, what did you see? He said, no, I saw Lord Narayan vanquished everyone. And I said, Sean, you think that is just a movie or you think it's true? He said, Dad, it's true because we went from small children. Mummy sent us when you was divorced and gone for 10 years. Mummy sent us to Balvi classes and myself and Shaw we were small children and we learned about God and the existence of God and the relevance of God in our life. So he said, yes, Dad, I believe that the Vishnu Puran is true, that Hiranya Kasipu, who wants to be in control and in charge of everything, cannot be in control and charge of everything because only God is in charge. So, I want to answer Sean's question. I want to answer Sean's question because I belong to the Sri Ramanuj Sampradaya and in the Sri Ramanuj Sampradaya, Sri Ramanuj thought in two aspects, in two aspects. One, he thought that there must be equality amongst all humans. There must be equality amongst all humans. There must be equality between husband and wife. There must be equality between mother and father. There must be equality between daughter and sister and brother in every aspect of life. Lord Sri Ramanuj thought there must be equality. And I was fortunate last year to do the Sri Ramanuja mantra around the statue of equality in Hyderabad, of which Lord Sri Ramanuj is in a sitting position. Now these, these 
discourses. Lord Sri Ramanuj. Lord Sri Ramanuj's body is still in existence after 1000 years after 1000 years in the Sri Rangam temple in its pristine state after 1000 years no I'm not drunk I'm not drunk anyone who anyone can go to Lord Sri Ramanuj web page on the internet wherever you are wherever you drink in you can go on the internet and you'll go on Google and you'll find Lord Sri Ramanuj and you'll find what that the information that I have given you is absolute information I'm giving you is absolute millions and millions and billions of people in India who are real Hindus who are real Hindus follow the Vedas follow the Vedas all right if you're a Hindu, you have to follow the Vedas. You have to accept the Vedas as authority. If you do not accept the Vedas as authority, then you cannot claim to be a Hindu. Do you understand, all of you? So again, Sean said, Dad, you are such a filthy character you had. How are you a guru? How you are a guru? Okay. Simultaneous or concurrently, my counterpart, my and Secretary General of this organization, my transcriber, he is doing discourses titled Acharya Ji, a guru of the 21st century. So this discourse might rob him of his series. Because I instructed him to reveal all. I instructed him to reveal all because he is doing a biography of the Guru. He is doing the biography of the Guru in his discourses, but afraid of the guru-disciple relationship he is not going down and deep All right? so I think I'm going to assist him I'm going to assist him so two weeks ago I had a call from my daughter. I had a WhatsApp message from my daughter. She said, Hi Dad, I am in Amshlanga, want to meet. And I said, Yes, it's too late now, we'll talk in the morning and six o'clock morning I think we were just or seven I was in RP and she sent me a message are we meeting there 
Then I said, yes, I will contact you. I will contact you shortly. So I see all of you shocked here. Yeah? Uh, still are you shocked? Guru got a daughter? Common knowledge. You know Strini, Guru got a daughter. From another wife. <laughs> Not from Mataji. <laughs> and you still in the satsang. You didn't leave the satsang. Why Strini? Why didn't you leave the satsang? You believe in your Guru. Dana? You went and bought pizza. <laughs> Not only for my daughter, her mother and her husband, my daughter's mother and her husband, my daughter's husband and my grandson. Granddaughter will be here soon. We're talking about the grand son. Talking about the grand son. You know, Guru never for fakes. Alright? So, Dana, are you still in Satsang? Yes, sir. Why are you still here? Because uh, you bought uh, my daughter from another wife was here. How am I still your guru? I believe in you. You believe in me or you believe in God? No. Aren't you embarrassed that your guru got a daughter from another wife? No. Dana, what race is my daughter's husband? A white. He's a white. The story gets more 21st century. This is a guru of the 21st century. And what race is a mother's husband? White. Guru of the 21st century. Does anyone know what religion my daughter and her mother is? Muslim. Muslim. My daughter, her name is Almira. She's a Rishi. You can't have license to do this. Alright? As it is, Padikrama is waiting for you. Don't smile. Don't smile. Only Guru can have license to do this. Alright? Rishi is busy imagining, hey, you go home. And he got a Vedic injunction. If my Guru can do it, I can do it. I must follow my Guru. Alright? Rishi, that's out. In the meantime, you do Padikram out your mind round and round Saraswati. Alright? Round and round Saraswati and Lakshmi. Don't go this side to the goats. Just stay there. Later, I'll put you in a goat pen. Alright? So can you see a guru sitting in a Vyasasana, sitting in a Vyasasana in a live discourse that's going to be posted and this discourse is going to reach over 40,000 people, okay? I am this is not the first time I've done this. This is not the first time I've done this. But I'm doing it again because my son wants to know how a filthy man like me can be a guru. Alright? So you think I, I should answer my son, Nikhil? You're happy with this, Nikhil? Chris Narayan. 
Okay? So let's look at the dynamics of all this. Guru, Hindu. Daughter, Muslim. Daughter's husband, Christian. Guru's grandson, what race? Colored. Colored. What race? Can you see the beauty? Guru, Hindu, daughter, Muslim, daughter's husband, white, a child between Indian and white will be colored, isn't? Yes. Daughter's husband, Christian. Equality for in one Ramanuj Guru. One single Ramanuj Guru. Look at his family. Microcosm of the world. Microcosm of the world. All of you seen? In this Sri Narendra, everyone was present. We all had pizza together. I played with my grand son. I met him on three other occasions. I met him on three other occasions. Right? I don't know whether him and my granddaughter are going to fight and say who's more senior. All right? But I sent a post. The same post that I sent a post with my granddaughter, same pose, I sent a post with my grandson. Equality for all. The reason my grandson is not around because they live in Joburg. They live in Joburg. At this point, does anyone want to leave this satsang? Because Sean said that the Guru's past is very, very filthy, Tivashni. You want to leave? You still love this Guru, Tivashni? You do? Okay, Tivashni still loves this Guru, Sean. Alright? So let's see. Let's see, Shalem. You don't want to leave, Shalem, Guru with the filthy past. You think with that past like that, I can, how am I a Guru? Person? Because I'm not a donkey. I'm not a donkey. Now, what's the definition of a donkey? What work does a donkey do? Sorry? Uh, a donkey, you load it up with any load. It's called work for a donkey. You give the donkey some grass here, the donkey will eat the grass here, will take his load and offload. As the donkey is offloading, you give it some grass, it's happy. It's happy. Then you load him up again and the donkey comes back here and you give it grass. So the donkey will do the same thing for until it retires. What a donkey will do? Or dies. He'll do the 
same thing. But the stupidity of a donkey, what is the stupidity of the donkey? It doesn't have to do that work. There's no reason for it to take the burden because somebody gave it some grass from here to there. The donkey has to lift its head up and see that it can eat the same grass without a burden. Isn't? And this is the stupidity of a donkey. Now the guru did not want to be a donkey. When the guru looked, he saw the grass of the Vedas flourishing. The grass of the Vedas flourishing. And what do you think the Guru did? He took the burden of stupidity and left it down. Devashni, what do you think the Guru did? Yes, he started chewing the Vedas. He started chewing the Vedas for free. For free. free. Now, what is the difference in chewing the Vedas for free and chewing the grass with the burden? You don't have to carry. And what is man's burden? His sins and his karmas. So the man with sins and karmas can never chew. Can never chew. The green, beautiful grass of the feathers. And the man with sins and karmas will be so heavy with his sin and karmas that he will die or she will die. Although born in Hinduism, an idiot. Because all that man wants or woman have to do is look up Turn right or turn left and what you'll see? Same grass you eating. With the burden is on the other side. Go eat it without burden. But because donkeys are stupid, absolutely dumb. They will reject the grass on the other side and continue with the burden thinking that the way of life with the burden is true. So I stated that when a guru sits on the Vyasasana, he does not sit because some bald-headed man has beautified it colored it up and on the authority of the bald headed man he go and sit. A guru only sits on the Vyasasana which is an esteemed seat. Which is an esteemed seat through the grace of his guru and Veda Vyas who is the compiler of all Vedic knowledge. Compiler of all Vedic knowledge. So if you explain to a donkey leave this burden and go on the other side the grass is green. Those donkeys that will go on the other side will be burden free. Those donkeys, when they become burden-free, 
they can come back and teach the donkeys who are still carrying the burden a hey, you fool you are dumb you are stupid because I went on the other side I chewed the grass and now I am chewing the grass for free why are you still chewing that grass you understand so to become a guru in the donkeys you have to be a donkey first you have to be a donkey first but you're an intelligent donkey why you're a intelligent donkey because you left and you chewed the grass for free similarly any human being that's intelligent any human being that's intelligent can leave his current station in life and go on the other side where life is burden free and that is what I did that is what I did and it does not matter you do not need a qualification to be intelligent you do not need a qualification to be intelligent intelligent is gifted to everyone an idiot will not use it a non idiot will the best name use it okay so let's see i according to my son was a filthy person then i saw the truth i used my intelligence and i began assimilating my truths that i found in the fairness all right let's see how i landed from filth to the via sasna from filth to the via sasna and let because if i travel from filth to the via sasna then there have to be vedic injunctions guiding me all the way from the filth right up into this seat then it is absolute you agree with it when you come in on the seat <laughs> no no so this is ready for the seat this i don't think there's anyone in the satsang who loves the seat more than rishi is it right we said diwali is from this is you was answering me from darkness to light not from a hey, boy or boy this is by his chapman he is not a donkey he is born with his intelligence and is yes 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 all right so let us see what lord narayan the supreme personality of godhead has to say on how to achieve a transition from full to purity who must say this lord shriman narayan himself and not another donkey not a 
donkey that is still in burden. But Lord Sriman Narayan himself, God must declare who is a guru or who is not a guru. Why God must declare? The Guru is giving God's message. Because Guru is a representative of God. Guru is a representative of God. So only God can declare the status quo of a Guru and not a donkey or a bunch of donkeys. <coughs> and what you call the children of donkeys? Donkeys? Okay, I thought don't kill any limbs. <laughs> so, so the donkey, the donkey's family, and the donkey's children. Donkeys have families. Yeah. All these donkeys put together cannot declare the status quo of a guru, because a donkey is stupid. It's carrying the burden. It doesn't want to go eat the grass for free. Okay? But God, who endorses a guru, will give humanity, will give humanity verdict injunctions as to who and how one is a guru or not a guru. You understand? So let's start reading what Lord Sriman Narayan has to say about the transition from filth to purity. The sacrifice of knowledge is superior to material sacrifice, O Arjuna. All actions and everything else culminate in knowledge. Chapter 4, verse 32 of the Sri Ramanuj Gita Bhashya. The sacrifice of knowledge is superior to material sacrifice, O Arjuna. All actions and everything else culminate in knowledge. Who's saying this? Lord Narayan. Vasan, who's saying this? Lord Narayan in his form as Lord Sri Krishna. Now let us, how can we, if the donkey states that this Bhagavad Gita is not true, if the donkey states, Shalem, that this Bhagavad Gita is not true, how can we show that donkey that the Bhagavad Gita is true. Giving them evidence. How can we give this donkey or this couple of donkeys or whoever are donkeys evidence that the Bhagavad Gita is true? What evidence are we going to find? Scriptural evidence? The donkey is carrying the burden. Donkey is stupid by birth. Alright? Guru was a sharp donkey. Guru was also with those donkeys, but he skipped. Alright? So you tell the donkey, listen, because donkeys ask some very stupid questions, you know. Alright? 
Because if by nature you're stupid, what questions you'll ask? Stupid questions, all right? So a donkey will say, how can this Bhagavad Gita is written by man? What a donkey will say? Bhagavad Gita is written by man, all right? Then how can we prove to the donkey that this Bhagavad Gita is not spoken and written by man? Nikhil? Because 15 years ago, 15 years ago, the Navy, the Navy of India discovered whilst they were trying to clean up the ocean, they discovered artifacts. They discovered artifacts under the sea in the exact position, in the exact position that the city of Dwarika was when Lord Shri Krishna was on earth. When Lord Shri Krishna was on earth. And this Bhagavad Gita is embedded in the Mahabharat. This Bhagavad Gita is embedded in the Mahabharat. And the Mahabharat gives the exact location of the city of Dwarika and the city of Dwarika before Lord Narayan left earth he sank the city of Dwarika as per the Mahabharat. These divers found artifacts these divers found artifacts That is more than 5,000 years old. It's going back to 9, 10,000 years. Can it be a coincidence that the Mahabharat gives the location of a city that is no longer can be seen by man and at the exact position man finds a city submerged in in the ocean. And this you can show the donkey if he goes on Google. If the donkey goes on Google, the donkey will find this info mission. Around 15 years or more, NASA found, NASA found the bridge between Lanka and India. This information is available to the donkey. If the donkey goes on Google. But you think after finding this information, the donkey will leave the burden and go and eat grass on the other side? No. Because a donkey has only one mindset. And what is that mindset? Stupidity. Stupidity. Alright? So, Tibeshni, why are you laughing at the donkey? So let's see. Let us. I already confirmed now that this Bhagavad Gita is 100 percent true. And how did I confirm it? With scientific evidence that in the Mahabharat it is stated that Lord Sri Krishna 5,000 years ago sank the city of Dwarika and left for Vaikuntha. Can any amount of donkeys on this earth refute this evidence? So this evidence is 
irrefutable. All right, irrefutable. And what the Bhagavad Gita is saying? The sacrifice of knowledge is superior to material sacrifice, O Arjuna. All actions and everything else culminate in knowledge. So that means as a human being, if you want to uplift yourself, you must have knowledge. You must have knowledge and knowledge is superior to material sacrifice. Material sacrifice. Now what do you think some people have done with this word sacrifice? Huh? They have taken it literally. What does material sacrifice mean? Financial sacrifice. You sacrifice financially, you sacrifice your time. What is she? Sacrifice financially and sacrifice your time. And when you sacrifice your time, what you do? Seva. Seva. And when Rishi was on the seventh Saturday Seva program, no matter how shiny this floor was, Rishi did not slip. So Rishi is back to Rishi back. Permanent Saturday. You heard of the word eternal. Rishi back. What eternal means? Anyone want to help Rishi Bhai? Forever. Rishi Bhai? How many years older than you think Dhana is? Fifteen. Fifteen? Uh, you'll be that age. You'll still be here every Saturday. You'll be? What age? And Dhana will live quite long. You just keep measuring, huh? Dana as you moving. <laughs> because Saturday is See when you miss a Saturday Rishi? How dangerous it is? Because you made the floor so shiny, not me. Don't blame the Guru. You slipped on the floor. Alright? But Guru loves you. Guru will always pick you up and just extend your seva. All right. So coming back, coming back, and we want to conclude now that when, when you have no knowledge of a specific subject, when you have no qualifications of a specific subject, don't condemn. Don't condemn. Because when the truth is thrown on your face, sometimes you might not have a place to hide might not have a place to hide. First, before making any accusation or condemning anyone, stop being a donkey, release your burden, come onto the other side, come onto the other side, learn, ask and learn. Because when you ask, you will be told. You will be told. Because those 
that misinterpret the Vedas, that misinterpret are those that have no knowledge. So here when it is saying sacrifice, those that have no knowledge, what do they sacrifice? What do they sacrifice? Is sacrificing animals an instruction of God? Not an instruction of God. So if anyone, if anyone calls himself a Hindu and goes against God's instruction, what will be the consequence? What will be the consequence? You'll be a donkey in the next life. But you'll be a, what do they, they normally sacrifice? Goats. Goats. So you'll be a goat donkey in your next life. What happened to Vesni? Because here's the Vedic injunction. Here is the Verdict in junction, and I'm going to read it to you. In Agni Somya, etc., no injury is caused to the animal to be immolated. For according to the verdict text, the victim, a he goat, after abandoning an inferior body, will attain heaven, etc., with a beautiful body. The text pertaining to immolation declares, O animal, by this immolation you will never die, you are not destroyed. You will pass through happy paths to the realm of gods, where the virtuous only reach and not the sinful. May the God Savitar give you a proper place. Yajur Veda 4, 6, 9, 46. And then Lord Sri Ramanuj goes on to state, Hence, just as lancing and other operations of a surgeon are for curing a patient the immolation of sacrifice, sacrificial animal in the Agni Somya, etc., is only for its good. So, in this Agni Somya from the Yajur Veda, why do they sacrifice? Agni Somya means? What is the meaning of Agni? Fire. And Somya? Immolation. Immolation means thrown into fire. Thrown into fire. So in Vedic times, when one was doing Agni Somya, then they would find a sick he goat or a lame he goat. They will do this Agni Somya, this immolation with absolute Vedic injunctions. The soul of the goat will go where? To heaven. For who, for the benefit of whom, was this goat thrown into the fire? For the goat. But what has become custom now? For the benefit of man who sacrificed. Man for his greed. Man for his greed sacrifices a goat. 
because man thinks by sacrificing a goat his life will become will become better agni means fire, fire. how is man doing goat sacrifices now slitting its throat sita sita <laughs> I'm talking about Sita's family here. Who cuts goat, Sita? We used to cut. No, Your brother no, used no. to cut, isn't it? Yes. Who stopped him? The guru stopped him. Which guru? Jai Sam Ramanesh. The guru stopped him. Give a brother a hand. Because he's not a donkey any more. He listened. and her brother is a lecturer her brother is a lecturer at a reputed institution he came to my satsang he came to my satsang i explained to him the futility of sacrificing a goat he had already ordered he had already ordered this goat all right it was just to be delivered and i went to his house and i went to his house and what we did sita we had a beautiful satvik pure what sita satsang satsang we sang the name of lord narayan we did lord narayan's mantra and we purified that demonic how that house was sita and how it is now like an ashram her house is like an ashram and sita is not an ordinary person sita is is a qualified accountant i'm just i'm just telling the world sita because somebody might think i just made you sit on for for the purposes of this discourse so sita is a qualified accountant she studied she has a degree and the guru stopped and the guru explained to her brother who also has a degree in engineering sita yes. brother has degree and is lecturing in engineering for many many years because they had not followed a guru because they had not followed a guru they did not know that they were murdering animals they were murdering animals cruelly cruelly but when i showed him the vedic injunction he stopped killing animals unnecessary because the only reason a goat must be sacrificed is for his own benefit and not with a bush knife the goat must be thrown into a fire sita do you have anything to say you happy you happy that your brother met your guru sita You you wrong, Sita. Your brother introduced you to this guru. <laughs> Are there any questions? Are there any questions? So, according to the Bhagavad Gita, I just want to conclude. All right.
because I don't know how long Sean will be here. Maybe by the next discourse he'll be gone. So, <laughs> so just for him, and I hope he's happy with all my explanations because he made a very, very serious allegations against your Guru Sita, Sean. Huh? Okay. So, Sean, you want to know? So, verse 36, Sean, and I want Sean to hear this thing properly. Even if you be the most sinful of all sinners, you will cross over all sins by the boat of knowledge alone. You heard that, John? Verse 36, chapter 4. What you heard? That your father who has a multiracial, who created a multiracial family, in an immoral way, Sean, multiracial family in an immoral way, your father created, he stopped being a donkey, he jumped on the other side, and he ate the grass of knowledge. And when he ate the grass of knowledge given by Lord Sriman Narayan, he became as pure as milk. And when he became as pure as milk, he's enjoying this purity so much that God asked him to give this taste of the milk to the whole world. Jai Shriman Narayan.